North Idaho College proudly presents NIC Today, an informational news magazine that highlights the people, programs, and campus life at North Idaho College and the surrounding community. And now, your host and moderator, President of North Idaho College, Dr. Joe Dunlap. Well, hello again, and welcome to NIC Today. This is the program that brings you the people and programs that uh, make up North Idaho College. And today we have some very special guests who have very exciting jobs, and we're off to a new school year. So joining me today, uh, we've got individuals who have probably the most enviable jobs on this campus. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, we've got our coordinator for recreation sports, and outdoor courses and faculty member, Jessica Bennett. So Jessica, welcome uh, to the program today. In addition, we have John Totten, who is the coordinator for our Outdoor Pursuits program, as well as an instructor and faculty member here at NIC. John, welcome uh, to NIC today. And then, uh, in addition, we have our Vice President of Student Services, Graydon Stanley, joining us. Graydon, welcome. Thank you, Joe. And then, as always, we have Mark Browning, our Vice President of Governmental Affairs and Marketing. So, Mark, thanks for being here. Pleasure. Well, I want to start off uh, by first describing the fact that, arguably, we live in the most beautiful part of the country. And when people ask, where are you going to go on vacation this summer, the normal response is, we're staying right here. This is a recreation center of the country. And so uh, what I'd like to do uh, is, is talk a little bit about the recreation programs we have. And today those programs are called Rec Tech, which I guess bring us up uh, to the uh, latest terminology in this uh, endeavor. And uh, this has tremendous potential uh, for our students. And it also relates to the economy here in North Idaho where recreation is huge. So John, let me start with you. Why don't you tell our viewers about your program and how students learn the business of recreation and what you do with your program and the fact that you have uh, interns coming from all over the country. Yeah, um, thank you. It's a, it's a, it's all the colleagues that I have around the nation are pretty, they wish they ran a program in, a, in the place that I do. Um, this is the ideal location. We have all manner of outdoor opportunity due to the natural environment that we live in and so it allows us to run a very diverse outdoor pursuits program and it also allows us to not have to travel very far to do that. So right in our backyard we can do all manner of outdoor recreation right here. And um, the, you know the students get involved at all levels um, but specifically dealing with the with the business side of outdoor recreation, the, the rec tech. Um, I'll give you an example. Our, we have um, five interns that come in the summertime and uh, this year we had interns from Nebraska, South Carolina, Virginia, Vermont, and Kentucky. Ooh. All visit here from four-year universities. They're studying outdoor recreation and this is a required uh, part of their uh, bachelor's degree. And so they come out and they literally run a business on the lakefront here as everyone, as all of us know, but um, I wish more and more people would know that uh, North Idaho College, we've got a mile and a half on Lake Coeur d'Alene and our program operates down there seven days a week in the summertime. Um, our rental center is going every single day and we pretty much hand that over to the students. So it's their job to generate revenue which supports our program throughout the entire school year. And um, a really a neat thing that's uh, new is stand-up paddle boarding has really <laughs> taken off. Um, I'm getting some laughs. Of, for some. Right, yeah, for some. Or better some would sit down or fall <laughs> off paddle right, boarding. Right, right, right. The stand-up part's the, the challenge. But um, they've, uh, the students have really gotten a chance to be on, the, be on a cutting-edge sport in recreation. It's the fastest growing outdoor sport in the world right now. Mm. And um, it's been a lot of fun to get involved with. The students got to choose which boards we bought and there's uh, everybody's trying to get a piece of it right now. So there's lots of vendors contacting us all the time trying to 
tell us they've got the latest, greatest thing, and so on. And so the students got involved with that. And now that we have them, they're figuring out how do we utilize them? How do we get as much of this as we can? By offering the rentals, we're also, also offering lessons. Um, and we've started a race program. So stu uh, the entire community is coming. We actually have a race tonight on the, on the beach. And so people are coming down and racing these boards around buoys. And it's just really taken off. And so I think as far as students getting involved with the business side, I don't think we've ever had a better time for them to do that because they're seeing this new sport take off and figuring how can our college program get involved, how do, how do we get the students out there, how do we get the community involved, and how do we use it then to support the rest of outdoor pursuits because as you know we're, we do a lot more than just stand up paddle boarding, we operate all year round and so the, um, they've had a lot of fun doing that and it's fun to see the excitement and, and to see them tie into the, the buzz that's around, around that particular sport right now. So John, uh, with these stand-up paddle boards that you're having races with, are you allowed to use an elongated kayak paddle for that? Right. <laughs> or do you have to use a regular paddle board paddle? Oh no, it's all standard. The, you know, the, the really interesting thing about the race series is that it's a one design class and oh, so okay. everybody's on the same board. So it's kind of like NASCAR, right? It's supposed to come down to the driver. Yeah. And so everybody's <laughs> in the same car. Well, it's kind of the same concept. Everybody's on the same board, so you can't come down with a real fancy board and kind of and kind of clean house. And so that's um, again just making an opportunity for anybody who's fit and, and good at it to do really well and, and I think that's that's key when it comes to our students because they don't uh, they're not going to own their own board but they can come down and participate the same as um, we've got folks from Hood River Seattle that are uh, Missoula that are coming over to race but they're right in the mix they're on the same board as our students are out there and so it levels the playing field and but everybody's got the same gear going around the buoys well and I know we also have a, a fleet of sailboats this past weekend I went out to the beach and rented one of your Hobie craft and right. the wind was whipping and uh, those are like driving sports cars on the water and so I had a great time doing that now I know uh, you're going to take one of our sailboats the larger one a 22 foot Colgate up to a sand point as part of the regatta up there uh, here in the near future right right yep we're uh, we're gonna be competing in the spud cup uh, over Labor Day weekend <laughs> like uh, up at Sandpoint um, a couple things you know we're, we're up there to uh, to promote the sailing program here, but it's also an opportunity that, as you know, the Sandpoint Center is developing, and our goal is to be offering some sailing classes on Lake Ponderé in the near future, and that's um, very exciting. So it's a chance for us to kind of showcase that we've got a nice boat and um, a professional crew. We can get out there and compete with uh, with these guys up there, and uh, we've got a mix of, of staff, faculty, and students all on the crew. Great. And uh, we've been out there being around on the lake, and we're excited. We're looking forward to it. Yeah. Should John, I've got, I've got a question when it comes to rec tech because I think of it in, a, in I think the old term we used might have been ski bum. You right. Know, where, you know, you started as a lifty and maybe you worked your way into the shop. And, right. But it's so much more than that now and, and recreation is, is a huge business worldwide. How do you get the students to convey to say parents or others back home that, hey, I'm not just out here as a mountain biker or a canoeer or a fly fisher. This is actually a serious business and there's lots of money involved and this is how I will make my living in rec tech. How do you, how do you help them tell that story? I think the, uh, the best way is to go home and tell your folks how many people you worked with in one season. Um, we offered 18 sections of lessons this summer. We had uh, over 150 students go through the program. We did over 2,000 equipment rentals o over the beach. And so I think when you can go home and say, there's so much interest here, there's so much demand um, to be involved in this business. And it is a it's, business. It's absolutely a yeah. business, no it's doubt about it. Yeah. Um, and it's a, and especially in our region. I mean, this is a big part of the economy in North Idaho. We all know that. And um, so for the students to be, especially at the epicenter, they're on the lakefront every day do, doing that. And so I think that's the real key is to just let people know um, it's not three of us out there around the campfire uh, yeah. Uh, climbing mountains every day. Well, sometimes it is, but most of the time, <laughs> there's a there's a lot of people passing through the program every day uh, that are both local community members and people from all over the world. You go to the beach on a weekend, oh. strange tongues. I mean, there are people are. It's really it's really fascinating, and so I think that's the probably the best way to explain it. 
and, and learning how to make sure that those folks have a good experience here ties back into the tourism and customer service and keeping everybody Absolutely. coming back here so they have a good time. Yeah, it's, um, it's not as easy as it looks no. uh, to make sure that everybody's safe and that everybody has what they need and um, everyone's got different abilities and different desires out there and when you're working with a, a group of, of folks and trying to teach them how to stand up paddleboard or, or whatever it happens to be it's dynamic and it's challenging and it's it's fun when you when you watch it's just like watching someone have a breakthrough in any classroom and learn anything yeah. um, but except right behind them is mountains and birds and mm. wildlife and nice well, well John um, thanks for that insight and the so, fact of the matter is I mean you mentioned <laughs> the mountains and the uh, trees and, and other things other than the shores of Lake uh, Coeur d'Alene. And so uh, we've got Jess Bennett here who just took a group of students uh, down to Portland on a service trip. And then I'm also going to ask her to uh, describe uh, the ropes course that she manages here uh, on campus as well. So Jess, tell us a little bit about the trip that the students went on. And I believe you've got some slides to show and then sure. uh, also talk about that ropes course. Yeah, thanks Joe. Um, yeah, I had the pleasure of leading eight students um, over spring break last year um, to Portland, Oregon. We participated in a full immersion program um, with an organization called Bridgetown. Mm. Um, basically, the, the people of Bridgetown um, make it their mission to form relationships and love the homeless people of their city. And so we were able to go and join them in that mission um, and, and learn a lot about that. Um, it was incredibly eye-opening. I think all of us went with our own preconceived notions and our own stereotypes of what homelessness is and um, what what leads people to living on the streets and um, what we learned really changed our views. It was pretty incredible. Um, I do have two examples maybe to help illustrate kind of what, what that learning, um, where the learning happened there. but. Uh, one of the days that we were there, we, we had a homeless experience. So from 7.30 in the morning to 5 p.m., um, we broke into small groups and we walked the streets of Portland. We didn't have money, we didn't have cell phones. Um, all we had was our sleeping bag and the clothes that were, were on us. Um, and we had to figure out what we were gonna eat and how we were gonna get out of the rain. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty incredible. My small group happened to be all women, um, just by chance, I guess. And as we were walking the streets, we came across um, a women's shelter and ended up um, going in there hoping for a cup of coffee. I guess that's what I think about at 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> and, um, and we ended up um, knocking on the door and they let us in and we ended up staying there for over two hours and having, um, sitting on the floor of this shelter, having conversations with women, um, listening to their stories and um, growing in our compassion for them, learning uh, what, what path took them to that place and um, a lot of them have had real tragedy in their life, um, domestic abuse, um, rape, and um, they they feel like they've been forgotten. You know, maybe some mental illness that have been, have, that has gone untreated, or um, drug addiction, um, or they've been caught up in the system. But it was pretty pretty amazing to spend those two hours there and and um, and really learn about them and learn to listen and and um, just learn from their stories. It was pretty amazing. Um, there's one other story I'd like to share, too, sure, if that's bet. okay. Um, Bridgetown um, is the name of the organization there that we worked with, and um, they have an amazing program. They work all year round, um, but one of their events that they put on every week is on Thursdays, and it's called Night Strike. Um, basically, it's this huge event under the Burnside Bridge in downtown mm -hmm. Portland, mm -hmm. and um, they invite people to come in for a free meal and clothes and haircuts and getting their bikes fixed and their nails painted. All, it's a huge, huge event. Uh, the night we were there, there were over 200 volunteers for this event and hundreds and hundreds of guests that joined us. And um, the volunteers, er, our students um, participated in a, many different ways, serving the people there and again, sitting down and listening to their stories and joking around with, these, um, with the guests there. And, uh, one, of, one huge takeaway that I had, or I guess the students had, I was approached after this event by three of the students and, and they were like, they were very surprised with who the volunteers were. Um, the volunteers were young people. They were college students just like them. And um, I think it was kind of that moment when they transitioned from being there and, try and learning to, um, to learning that they can be a volunteer and that they can come back to Coeur d'Alene and serve their community here. And they, it, that became more of a reality to them, I think, once they saw the compassion that, that the mm -hmm. young people of Portland were showing their homeless people. So 
um, yeah, we returned and we've been working in soup kitchens since and trying to reach awesome. out to our community. And um, it, was, it was a great success. Great learning experiences. Mm -hmm. Th that value mm -hmm. of expanding someone's norms and expectations or preconceptions of things, mm -hmm. how, how much value is that then when they take that back to their standard classroom? Let's say they're sitting in a math class or uh, you know, any class that they might take. What does that do to their mind as a student in, in helping them now deal with what comes in front of them after they've been to something like that? That's a great question. I think, um, I think there's tremendous value in, in what we did and the experiences we had and our um, ability to, to love and get to know people. And I think none of us will look at people the same way again. I mean, you come back to the classroom and all of a sudden you've become a better listener. You're more interested in what other people have to say. You realize that the path that they've taken in life is different than yours and um, you can learn from that and you can celebrate that. So whether you're in math class or you're walking down the streets of Coeur d'Alene or if you're in a soup kitchen or yeah. in a grocery store. All of a sudden it's not always just about you. Mm -hmm. there's, there's more than that around. Right. Great, and I wanted to ask you a question because students, is, they are at the center of what you do uh, being over student services and, and you've been here on campus about a year now. So uh, <laughs> it's gone by quickly. Yes it has, uh, we've been busy. What is ahead for the student services side of, of the institution here in the, in the coming year? Do you know, we're really excited about this upcoming year. It's just that time of year. The wonderful thing about our business is it's renewing. Um, every year it's a new group of students, a new set of challenges, and hopefully we're smarter uh, every year that it comes <laughs> around. So I think we'll be a little bit better again this year, certainly a little more experienced. And our focus is certainly going to be on helping students be successful in the classroom. The first reason that they come here is foreign education, to be successful in the classroom, to translate that into training transferring or getting a job eventually down the road. So most of student services, while there are a lot of great activities and student activities, extracurricular things, that's the privilege that comes from being a good student first. And so really our focus on what we're going to provide this year is supports to help students be successful in the classroom. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure, um, like all colleges nationwide, there's an issue with not so, so much students coming in the front door but students leaving uh, through the side door because they haven't been successful. They haven't met the requirements that federal financial aid places on them, that institutions place on them to be successful first in the classroom. And uh, we're trying to address those by putting a number of supports in place and, and making students understand from, the, from the, the front side that, you know, it's exciting to come to college. And there's all these wonderful opportunities for, for trips, for outdoor pursuits, for clubs and organizations, but that comes as a privilege from being a successful student in the classroom. So we've talked about satisfactory academic progress. That's a, a national buzzword, as, yeah. as you know, that requires that students uh, have at least a 2.0 GPA, that they complete uh, two-thirds of the classes that they attempt, credits that they attempt, that they complete their degree within a certain time frame. And we're trying to make sure that we don't let students get to the point where they fall off that SAP cliff, but we intervene prior to getting there so that we, we say, listen, this is what's happening. Listen, you have to get to class. You have to do better here. Here's the resources. Here's a tutoring center. Here's all these folks that can help you. That's the best of a, a community college is we provide those supports. And so we want to catch them before it's too late now and say, we're, we're there to help you. Let's help you be successful. Let's reprioritize what you do. So we're looking at early alert um, where faculty are indicating to us and saying, because they're, they're the first ones, John and Jess know from working so closely with students, that you're the first ones that see about four weeks into the semester, you can look out in your classroom and go, ooh, I'm worried about this one and I'm worried about that one. And we want faculty to be able to say to, to that team, uh, refer them to us so that we can provide some interventions to help them be successful. So we're putting that system in place. We've had a highly successful ORS program, orientation, getting students ready, and now we're moving to ORS 2 and, and replicating that for students that have been here a semester. The difference for them is, I think, when they come through ORS, they're like, sure, 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 yeah, you say it's going to be that way. And they don't necessarily believe us. And by the time you get partway through the first semester, they go, oh, the this is what on. they meant. Yeah. Exactly. And so we want to be there in ORS too to help them with that reality check get to the next step. So, um, you know, our focus is really going to be on helping students be successful in the classroom so they can enjoy the benefits of, of transfer, enjoy the benefits of clubs, organizations, extracurricular, and uh, being successful in their life after NIC. 
Graydon, one of the areas of responsibility that has been transferred to you, and I think it falls under that section of all duties, <laughs> other duties <laughs> as a <laughs> uh, is campus security and emergency management and planning. And I know your staff has been very uh, engaged in uh, the planning and exercises. Can you describe some of the improvements that have been made uh, recently with regard to emergency planning for the college? Ab absolutely, Joe, we'd be glad to do that. Uh, you know, that's certainly paramount. I, I heard John say when he talk, talks about his program, safety is number one. Even when we talk about just instruction on campus, people can't learn in an environment that they don't feel safe. So we have to make sure that's, that's what we provide to our students and employees. So we've been through a lot of processes. I know, Joe, you asked us early on to get some training, all of us, so that we were familiar with some of the language, the terminology, the trends related to safety, we went through that. Most recently, we had a tabletop exercise here working with uh, all of our partners in the community, Kootenai County and Coeur d'Alene and emergency, uh, emergency services, and kind of went through that rehearsal about how do we respond found out the areas that we're strong in, discovered some of the areas that we need to, to bolster up. And so that was a great exercise for us. Uh, we just recently installed one of the standards for campus safety, of course, is making sure in a shelter in place situation that you have the ability to lock the door behind you so somebody couldn't come in who you didn't want in. Uh, we retrofit a lot of the doors here on campus to make sure that that, that happens. We have, uh, we'll be going through a number of not just talking about it, but practices this school year Year where we'll work through it as if this situation has happened and have our employees, our students, all the stakeholders here have to practice. So if the time ever comes, unfortunately ever comes, it's something that we're used to. We know how to react. We know what to do. So, so hopefully we can lessen that. Uh, Jess, John, I've got a question because you, you're very directly connected with students. How much do students talk about potential safety situations. Just in the very recent news, there was another shooting in uh, this one uh, in suburban Atlanta, Georgia. And unfortunately, I think we all operate under a mindset here, at least I know from, from the administration level, that it's not if, but when. But I'm curious, do, do students talk about this when, when you're on a travel trip or you're out on the river with them? Do, do they talk about potential situations where there could be that kind of scenario on a campus? Um, I, I would say very rarely, uh, and I think it's because it goes back to the environment that we live in. I think it's one of those things that's kind of, that only happens in the big city or it, uh, in, you know, where there's lots of people and things like that. We're out here in the, in the North Idaho countryside, right? Even when we're on campus, it feels like you're out in the countryside, right. which is something we enjoy, but I don't think it's on their minds as much. At least it's not been brought up to me, I don't think ever, I'll be honest. I think the students feel safe here and like you said the small town um, we're not in the big city and yeah I haven't heard much about it either. Did, did you have a feeling when you were in Portland that uh, I've traveled to Portland a number of times that you know most of us are pretty familiar with it mm -hmm. as a northwest city but it, it feels different. Right. You know, when I go to Spokane it feels different mm -hmm. than what it does walking in downtown Coeur did, did you have any safety concerns with, with the group of students there? Um, no, I mean, like any city, there are precautions that you need to take, maybe a little bit more, um, or look at it a little differently than here in Coeur d'Alene when you're in your hometown. But, um, you know, sometimes you, we saw some fights, maybe a little bit break out, but we weren't involved with that. We were able to kind of just bypass. Exactly. But I think it was eye-opening to them. Some people had never been out of Idaho before, so that's a, that's a big deal, a big city to go to. And, um, yeah, so a little bit, but not so much. Just one thing we didn't talk about was your ropes course. Sure. And so could you uh, describe that? And I think we've got a video to go along with your description of that. Sure. Um, so we have the NIC Challenge course here on campus. It's located right behind the Student Union building. Um, we first built the course in 2008, and it's been um, um, gaining momentum ever since. So we've been able to put on additions to the course throughout the years. About every other year we're averaging, um, adding a new element and it's a great opportunity for uh, campus groups. So um, different clubs, sports teams, faculty, staff groups um, to come and do, you know, team building and kind of push their limits, get outside of their comfort zone. Um, what I call the learning zone, that's where you become more dynamic and interesting. That's kind of what I tell my stu <laughs> students, which I think is important. And um, I also work with community groups as well. Um, so it's open to um, 
to our community. I've had doctors and dentist offices. I've worked with different um, state departments, and um, yeah, it's a great it's a great program. It's a really fun way to um, face those fears and grow as an individual, and also grow as a team. Um, learn to trust and communicate uh, with each other, and um, and feel um, like you're conquering something. Yeah. What a great program. John, we've got about a minute left. Uh, why don't you describe uh, the priorities you have for the Outdoor Pursuits program and where you think you're taking that uh, here in the near future? Um, I would say uh, two priorities right now. Uh, first and foremost, we're trying to um, do more uh, leadership development within our program. Um, the challenge of the, with as many as the community colleges as the turnover. Students aren't, aren't here as long as, for example, where I went to school at a four-year university, where I had more time mm -hmm. to work with them. And so we've expanded our internship program to go year-round now. It used to be just in the summer. Now we're going to go year-round because we want to give students an opportunity to lead other students. And so that's definitely my, my first priority right now. And um, second of all, it's... Uh, it's all about facilities for us right now. I think we're, we're seeing our lakefront develop. In the last five years, we've made a lot of big steps with new facilities and, and new boats and things like that, and we're watching the numbers follow them fast. Mm -hmm. And so what's next? That's what I'm trying to figure out, and I'm not sure exactly what that next step is, but I think we're starting to show the potential that we've all, we've all known has, has been there ever since the college has been in this location, and I think we've been able to prove that if we invest a little bit, we get a lot back, especially from our community, in developing that space. And so I would say those are the things that are on my mind, for sure. Great. Great. And any last comments? Just excited about another school. You're glad to be a part of this team. It's hard to believe it's been here for a year and uh, looking forward to great things in our future. You bet. Well, listen, I want to thank uh, everyone for being here today. Jess, we appreciate uh, the insight that you've provided. John, thank you for describing about uh, Outdoor Pursuits program. Great, and it was great to hear about the changes in student services. And as always, Mark, it's great to have you here. Thank you for tuning in to Channel 19 and learning what's new at North Idaho College.